Okay, it's time to get back on this clay. Um, I got a call this morning from the uh, foundry. <clears throat> they asked me to hold off bringing the clay to the foundry for a couple of weeks for a couple of reasons. Their uh, mold room is filled with a uh, two monuments that they're uh, making molds of right now, so there's no place to place the clay until uh, they get done with all that. Secondly, the owner of the, the foundry is uh, south of the border, and when he comes on a vacation, and when he comes back, uh, he's going to have to be put in 14 days of uh, uh, quarantine. That's the that's the way it is right now. Anyway, uh, so they asked me to wait for a couple weeks to bring in the clay. I'm going to go ahead and finish it up. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish it up today. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing is uh, doing the belt or finishing the belt on the uh, figure. It, uh, let me show you a real quick light. That's what it looks like. And uh, I'm going to be doing this knot. I'm going to try to figure out how that is tied. And uh, he wears it on the uh, clothing. Now, this is from a uh, reenactment uh, village called the Na Nazareth Village, or I think that's what it's called, but I'm not certain on that. Um, and they dress the way they would have dressed 2,000 years ago, and that's uh, where I got the idea for the uh, tying of the uh, belt. All right, let's get started. And uh, put my glasses on so I can see what the heck I'm doing. One more thing before I start the day. I just wanted to thank... Santa Claus, whoever you are, thank you for the gift. I appreciate it very, very much. Time to play with some play. All right, I got it on there. It's a little confusing how it's tied, unless I actually watch them do it. They had a particular method of doing all kinds of things. Um, if they put a wrap around their head, they had a particular way of doing it. And uh, what I do is I ran clay through my uh, uh, pasta machine, and so it came out even. And I cut it into a, a strap width. But now I have to put clay behind this so that it can be cast easily, molded. So I put a blank piece of clay back there. So that it looks like it's hanging away from the body, even though it isn't. I gotta get extra light on this subject, so I'm putting a flashlight that I have above it. I can't get my uh, above lights down any lower, so I'm going to put a couple of fondue sticks to uh, support the light. I 
got to put some clay at its base to make it stay where it's at. You have a problem, you find a solution. Yeah, clip these so they don't hit me in the face. Okay, now I can see what I'm doing. I just want to get out here. Just realized I got them all in a straight row and they're not. So I gotta cut them back a little bit. Now I know that the uh, fluorescent quality of the uh, light that I've got showing in this video is flickering a little bit and uh, there's nothing I can do about that. No, I don't want to do that yet. I just saw something I need to do. Oh, 
I have to fill in between the toes and underneath this strap because that's a deep undercut and if I do that after I put lighter fluid on the toes it won't be I won't be able to do this until next time because it makes it very slick and the clay won't stick so I'll get this first Never in the ocean. I took the irritating light out of the way. <clears throat> now remember, next time you go to a museum and you see a bronze sculpture or a marble sculpture, remember that that didn't happen by accident. That took literally hundreds, if not thousands of hours to get to the point where it looks like something that it isn't. It'll make you appreciate all the uh, years of training and practice that went into every inch of that work of art. All right, that's going to do it for today, and I'll see you next time. Give me a thumbs up and share my video, and then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.